The Jersey Shore, summer hangout and tourist trap for many, but for a select few, it is a livelihood. The shore is the site of what is today a $151 million a year industry, fishing. New Jersey brings in 153 million pounds of fish each year. But is that too high? Is the industry overfishing? So two intrepid Princeton students, who knew almost nothing about fishing, but a little bit about filmmaking, headed out to the commercial port of Belford, New Jersey, to learn the answer to those questions. In our defense, we knew a fair amount about fishing in an ecological sense. Fish occupy a natural ecosystem before fishermen come to drag them out of the water. If too many are taken too quickly, the population will drop. This, in short, is the problem of overfishing. But fishermen face a totally different problem. Getting to the dock around noon, we encountered a dock teeming with men who were unloading bluefish from their newly returned ships. There were no women in sight. But even though the dock was visibly alive with activity, it's becoming more and more difficult for these men to make a living like this. And they're pretty sure that government regulation is to blame. The government, the government wraps this whole business up. They have it around their finger. They tell us when to go, when to stop. Like fluking, they put us on a 500 pound limit per boat. Like there's an overall number. Like uh, say in New Jersey, they only like to keep 50,000 pounds. We'll just say, I don't know if that's, you know, that's the number, but. Every boat can only catch 500 pounds, and until they can reach that 50,000, they stop. So you got to go every day, just in case they shut it down tomorrow, you know? You never know when they're going to shut it down. In the spring and shit, once, once they catch their quota for fluke, a lot of these boats just sit tied up waiting for Bunker to come in almost for months. Sometimes they tie it up to the dock not working. But it's a complicated issue. Fluke is an extremely popular fish in New Jersey. If fluke was not protected by regulations, Overfishing would cause a rapid drop in their population, as well as a loss of territory to other ambitious fish species, making the reduced number of fluke work that much harder to survive. So while fishermen like Ron are inconvenienced by regulations, there's a good reason for it. Other fisheries, like the lobster fishery, fall into a similar category. They used to catch so many lobster right here in the bay, everywhere, but the government put a limit to it now that you can only have a certain amount of pots and then they started disappearing so the government made a limit 800 pots people were fishing tons of pots 1500 pots some of them and then they put a limit on 800 how are you going to feed a family when you were barely feeding a family on 1500 pots dropping down to 800 how you you know how are you going to make ends meet um part time now because the government regulated me to 800 traps an 800 pot limit is about half capacity for Bruce and when this reduced amount is combined with high gas prices, maintenance, rising bait costs, and the ever-present problem of theft, Bruce's take-home revenue has dropped to the point where he's taken on two part-time jobs to subsidize his income. Everything's in a cycle, but unfortunately the cycle has never came back. catch them, but not as thick as they used to. They used to be a lot more. According to the New Jersey Department of Fish and Wildlife, the local lobster population is doing great. But today, fishermen in New Jersey catch less lobster than they did in 1987, partly as a result of government regulation. But the very regulations that limit these fishermen are necessary to protect the lobster population. But talking to retailers, a new problem arose. Jeremy Stein, who works at Nassau Street Seafood and Produce, maintains that it's the goal for the market to buy locally whenever possible. But with lobster, it's hard to do. Uh, we can get more some from, from Maine and from Canada. Most of our lobsters come from there. We have several different lobster companies we, um, we go to. But there is one lobster company in New Jersey that we deal with, and uh, we gladly do business with those guys. Point Lobster Company is the name of the company. But Point Lobster trucks some crustaceans all the way from Nova Scotia. 
A lobster traveling from Nova Scotia to New Jersey has to go about 1,000 miles. Even in a Prius, that's like 20 gallons of gas. In an 18-wheeler, try 100. So while the New Jersey lobster is safe, the transportation from Nova Scotia increases greenhouse gas emissions. It comes down to this. If there are no fish, there are no fishermen. Imposing quotas and regulations on fishermen is a necessary evil. Regulation not only protects the sea and the seafood in it so that they remain sustainable resources in the future, but also ensures that fishermen are provided with a sustainable livelihood by securing enough future fish to catch. Yes, there does need to be more dialogue between the government and the fishermen, so lobster doesn't get shipped to New Jersey from a thousand miles away. But the consumer also has a role to play. Just because a lot of seafood is overfished, or caught in ways that is harmful to the environment, does not mean you have to stop eating it. So do some research. If you do, you'll find out not only what seafood is caught or farmed in sustainable ways in your area, but you'll also discover that Princeton University was the first higher education institution to partner with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program, meaning that the dining halls make a concerted effort to support sustainable fisheries. So by researching your seafood choices and following the example of Princeton University Dining Services, you are supporting the fishermen and the fish. After all, we all have a role to play, even the fish. my toy. This is my uh, thing that annoys everybody else out there. It's a little dog toy. Check it out. I know somebody responds so bad. You can't even talk on the radio to them if they're annoying people. <laughs> That's just basically my day. It's what I do.